the lineal championship. It's a straight right hand up the pipe. Oh, huge right hand. An unofficial title, which attempts to clarify the modern gluttony of sanctioning bodies and alphabet titles. Commonly described as the man who beat the man. 15 rounds for the middleweight championship of the world. The lineal title stays with the champion until he's defeated, retires, or vacates. Casiano just up at the count of eight. He is a very wobbly young man. If the title has been vacated, a new lineage begins when a new undisputed champion is crowned. In my time, to win the championship, you had to knock a man out. Today, they win it on points, 10 or 15 rounds. It begins with Jack Dempsey, only not the one you're thinking. Same name, different guy. He reigned for seven years before Bob Fitzsimmons. At this point, the all-nitrate film starts to disintegrate, but a somewhat viewable version of the 14th round knockout was assembled from potato chip-like fragments. Watch Fitzsimmons on the right step under Corbett's left jab and land his own hard left to the champion's midsection. Fitzsimmons fought Dempsey and knocked him out in the 13th round. He'd reigned for four years until he moved up to heavyweight and vacated the title. I've often been asked, what's the difference between now and then? The difference is, in my time, you had to knock a man out to win the championship. Tommy Ryan held the title for eight years before he, too, vacated. Stanley Ketchell was next. 1909, world middleweight champion Stanley Ketchell defends his title against the number one contender, former world middleweight champion Billy Papke. Ketchell and Papke here would fight three times. The title went from Ketchell to Papke, then back to Ketchell. Ketchell is perhaps most remembered for his heavyweight fight against Jack Johnson. As Ketchell moves in to finish the job, Johnson will land a twisting right hand on the jaw, knocking Ketchell cold. Johnson trips over... Ketchell's reign ended when he was gunned down in his home at age 24. Frank Klaus's reign was short, lasting just a year. George Chip defeated Klaus, then lasted just a year before running into Al McCoy. McCoy lost to O'Dowd. O'Dowd turned around and lost to Johnny Wilson. Wilson lost to Harry Greeb. Greeb lost to Tiger Flowers. Tiger Flowers was the first black middleweight champion. His humble personality and clean style of fighting made him a fan favorite despite the color barrier. Which brings us to Mickey Walker. He has great boxing ability, the punching strength of a heavyweight, the speed of a lightweight. That combination makes him one of the most formidable fighters of all time. And Mickey Walker, the toy bulldog, closes in with lefts and rights. Walker likes to move in close, soften up his man on the inside, then move away and throw barrages. Boom, perfect timing. Known as a powerhouse in his day. And it's all over. Another amazing victory for Mickey Walker. He stayed on top for five years before vacating the title to move up to heavyweight. Tony Zale is most remembered for his trilogy with Rocky Graziano. First fight. Graziano's down in the first round. Zale is down in the second. Zale beat Graziano, then lost to Graziano. However, Graziano quickly met Zale again. Graziano just up at the count of eight. He is a very wobbly young man. Zale's coming after him again. And Graziano is thrown on the canvas. Zale finished the Rocky Graziano trilogy in style. Marcel is seen here arriving in the United States for the official signing with middleweight champion Tony Zale. He said, Tony, that he thanks you very, very kindly for giving him this opportunity to fight for your title. It wasn't long before Zale took on Marcel Zerdan. For the middleweight championship of the world. I think Zale's uh, sense of self oh, he's got it with a lovely left hook there. Zale on his knees in round 11. Zerdan dropped Zale and captured the title. 
Check out a few other KOs from Serdan. This is where Jake LaMotta enters the picture, better known as the Raging Bull. June 16th, 1949, middleweight champion Marcel Serdan of France defends his title against New York's Jake LaMotta. Here in round five, Jake LaMotta in dark trunks with a white waistband is the number one challenger in the division. He is five feet eight. From start to finish, this was a rousing battle as LaMotta and Serdan stay toe to toe. LaMotta would hold the title for two years before a newcomer to the middleweight ranks arrived. Sugar Ray won the first 39 fights of his career before he moved up to middleweight to take on his most famous rival, the Bronx Bull, Jake LaMotta. Sugar Ray held the world championship welterweight since 1946 and he ran out of challengers. He just returned from a triumphant European tour putting his title on the line six times in less than two months. Robinson, early in his career, was so good that he was running out of welterweight challenges. And uh, in order to get opponents, he would go into the next division. The middleweight champ of the world, one of the ring's toughest competitors, the Bronx Bull, Jake LaMotta. Because only one LaMotta-Robinson fight was recorded, I decided to cover the entire rivalry all at once in this section. Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta fought six times. LaMotta handed Robinson his first career loss in 1943. So let's drop in to Bobby Gleason's gym in the Bronx, where LaMotta usually trains whenever a tough assignment awaits him. Much of what is known now about uh, Jake LaMotta, I think, is uh, rests on Raging Bull. <laughs> and what was in this generation, what they've seen. LaMotta is most associated with the Scorsese biopic, Raging Bull where a young Robert De Niro portrayed LaMotta. LaMotta upset Robinson. Now keep in mind, LaMotta might have had 19 pounds on him. Sadly, only their final fight was filmed. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The best remembered fight from their series of legendary slugfests is the last one. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And a fight that Ring Magazine places in the top five classics in boxing history. Boxing Club proudly presents 15 rounds of boxing for the World Middleweight Boxing Championship. Sugar Ray Robinson. The World Middleweight Boxing Champion, Jake LaMotta. Well, here it is. It's about the whole world's been waiting for. Brought you tonight by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer from the Chicago Stadium. The present middleweight champion of the world, Jake LaMotta. The present welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson, the challenger for... They called it the St. Valentine's, Valentine's Day Massacre. LaMotta's nose and right eye shows red around the skin from punching. It was a brutal assault. Robinson set him up with those body blows, damaged his nose. He has LaMotta on Queer Street holding on. Row after row after row, from the ring, the crowd is standing and cheering. Ray pounded on LaMotta. The fight was stopped, and Robinson had closed the book on their rivalry. LaMotta's left eye is closing gradually. LaMotta at this moment, a tired battler, a chopping block. Robinson trying to KO him. The fight is going to be stopped on the signal from the chairman of the Illinois Athletic Commission, Joe Kleiner, to Frankie Sapora. The fight was stopped in the 13th round with our scorecard. And the new world middleweight boxing champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. Now, excuse me. This fight, because it was seen by a lot of people, um, showed that boxing could have beauty to it. Funny side note, despite the punishment he routinely took in the ring, LaMotta would live to be 95 years old. I, I just, I guess God gifted me with a hard head because I really, I really couldn't feel punches. Ray won the middleweight championship of the world in February 1951. 
14 years ago when he KO'd the tough Jake LaMotta in the 13th round. So Sugar, Sugar Ray Robinson had 40 fights, right? 40 and 0. And then he lost one fight, right? And after he lost that one fight, he went 80 fights on the feet. Sugar Ray Robinson would hold this belt off and on five separate times, losing, then winning against Randy Turpin. The championship bout for the middleweight title, Ray Robinson against Randy Turpin. Here's Robinson getting into the ring. The polo grounds is packed. 61,000 people. His celebrity status had turned his fights into events, bringing out the biggest stars. Joe DiMaggio and Marlena Dietrich, Joe Lewis, Eddie Cantor, Eddie Egan, General MacArthur, Lowell Thomas. Every newspaper in the country is here. Robinson's best bet is to box this guy and look for spots. In a huddle, his head collided with Robinson's and the champion started to bleed. The referee walked over to Ray's corner at the end of the ninth round and said to Ray, Ray, your cut is very bad. I'm going to stop the fight. Ray said, give me another round. He said, I'll give you one more round. A bad cut nearly forced a stoppage, but Ray was given one more round to knock out Turpin. throw punches from all angles and caught up the turf and knocked him out in the 10th round. This is murder. What's keeping tripping up? He's getting hit more than he has in his whole career. There, that's right. I would have stopped this myself. Turpin doesn't know where he is. Robinson retired as champion. The retirement lasted two and a half years before financial issues forced him to return to the ring. That he's broke, desperately in need of finances. Well, that's somewhat true. I need a buck as well as anyone else, I guess. Defending champion was Carl Bobo Olsen. The best fought the best, and you had a lot of the best. World middleweight champion Carl Bobo Olsen is challenged by Sugar Ray Robinson, Chicago, 9th of December, 1955. He came back to challenge the new middleweight champion, Bobo Olsen. Sugar Ray making a tough comeback is now 35 years old to Olsen's 27. Sugar was 35 years old, and most suspected he was washed up. It took just two rounds before Ray made it clear he had plenty left to offer the sport. Down he goes. Bobo is down. Bob is back. Trying to get up. Still trying to get up near the crowd of 10. He didn't make it. It's all over. Robinson is the middleweight champion of the world. Winner by a knockout at 2 minutes and 51 seconds of the second round. Three years after he had retired, Sugar Ray was middleweight champion again. At age 36, Sugar Ray lost his middleweight title on points to 26-year-old Gene Fulmer. Robinson lost the 15-round decision. And again, the sports obituaries were written. Winner by unanimous decision and the new middleweight champion of the world. Sugar Ray Robinson was the challenger once more. At his training center at Pompton Lakes, he planned his revenge. One thing about Sugar Ray Robinson, you didn't want to be the guy who beat him and is fighting him in the rematch. Because if you were lucky enough, but very few people beat him, but if you were fortunate enough, good enough, to beat him, all in the rematch, you usually got knocked out. Because he, <laughs> he fixed what we went wrong. Yeah. One of the signs of a great one. Robinson was such a tactician that rematches to him were like tests with the answers already written in. Six months later, challenger and champ square up once again. It's Robinson's 148th professional fight. He's 36 years old. Fulmer, the champ, is 11 years younger. Gene Fulmer 
was a tremendous middleweight champion. Here's Sugar Ray Robinson, who was really a welterweight. The former world's welterweight and middleweight champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. The middleweight champion of the world, Gene Fulmer. And Fulmer, this strong, bull guy, who was underrated as a fighter, too. To the left, and Sugar Ray Robinson. Fourth round of scheduled 15, and Sugar Ray gets home a good right hand shot to the jaw of Fulmer. This may have been what Robinson was waiting for. He clamps down. Robinson and versus Fulmer, too would be one of Sugar Ray's finest moments. But as he steps to his right, he times a left hook. Robinson back on top. Robinson lost another decision to Carmen Basilio. The winner and new middleweight champion of the world, Carmen Basilio. He felt he defeated Basilio. And there were many people who agreed with him. So, of course, a rematch was in order to settle the issue. The rematch, like always, was a different story. Nearly 40,000 fans in Yankee Stadium and all eyes on the ring as announcer Johnny Addy introduces the two contestants. By round three, the pace is fast as ever, and the fight is even Steven. Sugar Ray trying to drive those hard jabs to the body and face. It was darn near impossible to beat Sugar Ray twice. Basilio having trouble with his left arm. In spectacular victories, Ray defeated the greatest fighters of his era. Randy Turpin, Carl Bobo Olsen, Gene Fulmer, and Carmen Basilio. Robinson battered Carmen over 15 rounds. Just look at that bulging left eye of Carmen Basilio's. By now he's really in trouble. Swelling his eye like a balloon. Watch for the terrific close-ups of that all-important eye. He was the best fighter I ever saw. And I've been looking at fighters for 55 years. The victory made him a six-time champion. All the fighters, I put them up there on Mount Olympus. With all the respect to a great guy like Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Tony Canzaneri, Willie Pep, Sandy Sadler, so many greats, Muhammad Ali. They come here, Ray Rollins is up there, up on Mount Olympus by himself. At the final bell, both men are still on their feet. Neither suffered much damage. The decision, an upset victory for little-known Paul Pender. Robinson was defeated for the final time, and Paul Pender became the lineal champ. Though Pender was judged ahead on points when the fight was stopped, it wasn't by much. Pender quickly lost to Terry Downs. Terry Downs, the champion, the lighter trunks. Then Pender quickly recaptured the title from Downs. Paul Pender has regained the middleweight championship. Pender retired as the champion. The next champion, was Dick Tiger. Fast rising middleweight from Nigeria, Dick Tiger takes on heart punching spider web in New York City. The reign of Dick Tiger was short, but he left an impression. Winner by unanimous decision, Emil Griffith. Emil Griffith is the winner over Dick Tiger. Emil Griffith would take down the Dick Tiger after one year. Griffith would quickly lose the crown. The new middleweight champion of the world, Nino Benvenuti. 
Nino would last two years before running into Carlos Monzon. Monzon banished Nino to the Shadow Realm and captured the title. An absolute beast who took on all comers. Monzon would reign for seven years. His run ended when he retired. The next few champions all lasted less than a year. Rodrigo Valdez won after Monzon retired. Valdez was quickly defeated by Hugo Coro. Okay, there it is, finally. Coro quickly lost to Antifermo. We have a new middleweight champion of the world. And Antifermo quickly lost to Alan Minter. Then began my favorite boxer's reign, the marvelous one. Hagrid will switch hands. Soft ball, but he'll go right-handed. Like a performer. I practice and practice and practice right here. The fight night, everything's got to come out perfect. Good he loose ropes into the press row. As Hagler with a good short straight right. That was a damaging punch. And Amani not quite Hagler hadn't lost in over four years. 22 straight fights. You can tell by the sound of the crowd, as we suggested in the conversation with Bobby Watts, this is Hackler country. He's lost only twice. He easily beat the men who beat him in return fights. He's never been stopped, amateur or pro. Then he went in the ring against Bobby Watts, who had previously defeated him. He got rid of him in two rounds. Hagler at times has been quite boastful, quite boisterous. War, that's what's on my mind. Hard right hand by Hagler. Appeared to hurt Watts. Watts is down. Just about the halfway point of the second round. Watts hurt by a right hand. And one of, one of Hagler's incredible attributes besides his skill was his determination to win. middleweights in all the world. Hagler would get another shot at the middleweight title. Alan Minter became one of only a handful of British fighters to actually gain a world championship in the United States with his victory over Vito Antuofermo in March 1980. This time against newly minted champion Alan Minter in Wembley Arena. Hagler came to London for the fight that cost Minter the title and British boxing its good man. And Alan Minter didn't particularly help the case. He gave an interview to, to Des Lynham for Sports Night where he said, uh, he said, I'll never lose my title to a black man. Minter was the heavy crowd favorite as the Brits showered their champion with cheers. As you look at the crowd, which has just sung God Save the Queen, it is always a moving scene. I must say, having covered a number of Hagler fights, I have never seen him so well conditioned. The British crowd were all with every exchange, particularly if one exchange favors Minter. The marvelous one beat Minter senseless. By that quickly, the middleweight champion of the world is Marvin Hagler. A chorus of boos under a hailstorm of bottles and trash baptized the new champion. He's won it in three rounds of people are throwing beer cans, one's landed on me. And this is the worst scenes we've ever seen at Wembley in any boxing ring in this country. It's absolute chaos. He's the only world title holder that when he won the world title, he never received his belt in the ring because the riot happened afterwards. He was still never heralded as a champion in the ring was what he used to fuel them through the next 12 defenses that he had. Anytime that it seems that 
uh, I talk to an English person, even the people that are over here that come from England, they apologize to me so much, apologetic. And uh, I tell them the same thing. I don't hold any grudges, you know, only grudges that I hold from my fighter. Brian Hagler is the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Uh, of 62 fights, he's won 52 have been by knockout when he faced Sugar Ray Leonard. Hagler versus Leonard at last. He was lured back into action by the return of an old rival, Sugar Ray Leonard. Seems that out here the feeling is everybody wants Leonard to win, of course, with the exception of the New England contingent, but everybody thinks Hagler will. From Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, well, if there's a word that describes tonight's activity here at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, it might be, finally, we're looking at $100 million gross here in Las Vegas. They're saying this weekend could have the largest economic impact in its history. He is the challenger and former undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. What is ring possible because he knew that Leonard was going to spend his time running? I think Marvelous Marvel is making a mistake. We saw a great performance by Sugar Ray Leonard so far, Tim. Great performance. It's closer than Marvin Hagler thought it would be going into this last round. Feel Hagler either won or got the draw. Look at Ray Leonard. What a cocky kid. Fight but on his feet. scoring of it people still argue about it to this day didn't they? lost a controversial decision to sugary leonard that to this day i think he won. was so frustrated by the decision and by obstacles to a potential rematch that he did something no other fighter has done he walked away from another eight-figure payday and moved to italy never to fight again sugar ray retired three solid punches by frank tate Michael Nunn knocked out undefeated IBF champion Frank Tate to restore the lineage. The crowd going wild, and Bill's the There's a new champion, a new IBF middleweight champion, and he is Michael Nunn. With a brilliant, brilliant performance, a completely one-sided fight. A tactical fight, a beautiful fight by Michael Nunn. Nunn defended five times before facing James Tony. Top rank copyright claims are insane, so I can't show my. He's down. He is down. Speed. That is he. I don't see him getting up. Tony eventually vacated, and the title remained vacant for several years. Dig in, boys. This is going to be a long one. Here we go. Hopkins, the champion in the red trunks. Allen, the number one contender in the white. Seat of his pants. No, he got hit. He got hit. Oh, he almost switched, Allen. Thought about it. Oh, what a body shot of straight by. During this time, Bernard Hopkins was one of several middleweight champions vying for the undisputed title. Hopkins is all over Allen now. Straight right by Hopkins. That, that was a body shot that did that, Steve. Put back. He's in trouble. That's it. We're in battle. Steps in and stops. He rattled off win after win, but was still not a major star in the sport. That would change after he entered a tournament to unify the middleweight division. It was DeBella who convinced Hopkins to enter the tournament to crown boxing's best middleweight. 36 at the time, Hopkins would first have to beat undefeated Felix Tito Trinidad of Puerto Rico, then arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Felix Trinidad uh, made a decision to move up in weight and pursue a, a championship at 160 pounds. Trinidad was 
coming through divisions, fighting the best guys and knocking them out. Finally, a super fight that could put Hopkins on the map. It's time for our main event. Felix Trinidad against Bernard Hopkins. Trinidad was an undefeated beast, heavily favored to defeat Bernard Hopkins. It felt like a passing of the torch type moment where Trinidad would clobber the aging and fading executioner. But on September 29, 2001, with a packed house calling for the executioner's head. And he is expecting to be booed, Jim. And his answer is, I come from Philadelphia where they boo Santa Claus. Trinidad's father says his son is gonna knock Hopkins out in the first round. Sometimes all that is just talk. Sometimes it means real fireworks from the opening bell. Trinidad knocked Gappy down in the first. He knocked Vargas down twice in the first. Knowing that he's intense. All right, hit him. I remember when he fought Trinidad. Man. That Favorite was fights. Woo! Trinidad was a killer. And I love Tito. I do too. Trinidad opens up, lands two power shots. Hopkins tries to fire back immediately. Hopkins is out boxing Trinidad, and he's winning most of the rallies. Bernard Hopkins at 36 still seems young fighting one of the great fighters of recent times. Bernard lands a straight right hand up the pipe. Oh, huge right hand! Huge right hand by Hopkins. Down goes Trinidad. Hopkins put the final touches on his masterpiece. Tito can get up. He's got the desire. He's never been knocked out. This fight is over. Steve Smoker stops it. Bernard Hopkins has put himself up there in the list of all the great middleweights. If he lost that fight, he was back to the back of the bus. If he wins the fight, which he did, he moves on to become Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, he moves on to greatness. Right out of the penitentiary, no gold medal, no silver medal, blue collar worker, and give something away, you had to kill me for it. The executioner, the alien, unified the middleweight division, one of the greatest fighters of all time, one of the greatest middleweight boxers of all time, Philly's finest. Hopkins lost the title to Jermaine Taylor in a controversial split decision. The fight was slow at the beginning, with Taylor cruising to an early lead. But in the closing rounds, Hopkins put on a show. The fight was close, but many felt Hopkins was robbed of his historic streak. They did this to a fighter of my statue. It was wrong. You don't do that to Bernard Hopkins because I'm good for boxing. I've been around as one of the icons, the last of the Mohicans. Taylor held the title for two years before losing to Kelly Havlin. lost to Sergio Martinez. Martinez lost to Miguel Cotto, which set up a fight with Canelo Alvarez. up and wait 
He set aim on the WBC middleweight title. A super fight with Miguel Cotto. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her. Constantly moving forward, silent aggression. Two of the biggest names in the sport. Three rounds to go. Don't need these rounds badly. Steady pressure, God. It's a steady pressure. It's not really with, with, with combinations. It's just with, with him coming forward, looking for shots like that. the distance. Good by unanimous decision. Canelo! Alvarez moved up to super middleweight. Currently, there is no undisputed middleweight champion that has risen to begin a new lineage. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.